Hey, what's up, Tiger Nation? In today's video, we're going to take a look at my key takeaways from LSU's 46 to 41 victory over Alabama. How good did that feel? I feel like at the end of the game, everything that happened during the game and everything that happened leading up to the game made it all that much better. Going into halftime, man, I'm sitting there and I feel like, man, we got this. Just don't turn the ball over, don't do this, don't do that, and there ain't no way because they can't stop us. And then lo and behold, we come out first drive and they have that, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, strip sack, I guess, on Joe Burrow. There was times there in the second half where you were kind of like, oh shit, are we going to lose this? But to pull it out in the end, man, that just that made it all that much better. So this was quite literally a record-setting performance for LSU. If you're giving out a game ball, an uh, offensive MVP, you have to give it to Clyde. Clyde went for 103 yards on the ground, 5.2 a pop, three touchdowns, and he tacked on 77 receiving yards and another touchdown. And you know what that guy coming into LSU, he was just a three-star. We heard how good he was, but you look at what Clyde does in the biggest games, on the biggest stages, and I mean, he, he shows up every single time. There are no duds in there anywhere. Before the season, and even earlier during this season, I was thinking to myself that there's no doubt in my mind that Clyde's coming back for a senior year. And I kind of felt bad for him, because I'm like, Man, it's a guy that waited his opportunity and he's going to lose it to two underclassmen and Tyron Davis Price and John Emery, but at least right now, you have to sit here and you have to wonder, is there any way Clyde doesn't go to the NFL? Which I just, that never even crossed my mind. Another guy that deserves a special shout out, Thaddeus Moss, six catches, 46 yards, not jumping off the stat sheet, but I'll be honest, when he first committed to LSU last year from NC State, he deserved, didn't, he didn't deserve, he received a ton of hype. And me personally, I kind of felt like that was because of his last name. And I never really thought that he was going to have all that big of an impact for LSU. So during the difficulty of last season for him when he very rarely played and I mean he would like some of the stuff being said about him wasn't nice you know and I just took to me I never expected anything out of him anyway so I was never disappointed at what he didn't give you last year but like Clyde he's another guy that has tremendously helped his draft stock to where and I, I don't know if he's gonna go but if he does, he might be picked in an early round or a mid round or, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I didn't think he'd be drafted at all. And I'm not, I, I sure as hell didn't think he'd even go to the draft. I thought both offensive tackles, Charles and Deculus, both played pretty poorly, which was kind of surprising because I said in my Bama preview video that Bama was not a great team rushing the passer and they were really able to get after Joe Burrow yesterday. But I'm a sample size guy and for the most part, I think there are eight games that you can look at Charles and Deculus. Well, eight games for Deculus, much less than that for Charles, but there are other games this season that you can look at and say, both of those guys are playing a lot better than they did last season. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna chalk this one up to I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to chalk it up to, but I'm going to chalk it up to they can play better than that and they will be play better than that moving forward. And then what can I say about Joe Burrow that hasn't already been said? Uh, he quite literally set numerous LSU season records last night. His 393 yards passing last night marked his seventh 300 yard game of the season which means he passed the previous season leader, Rohan Davey, who had six. His 31 completions last night gave him 236 on the season, 
which passed the previous record of 232 held by Jamarcus Russell. And LSU scored 46 points last night, which is more than any team has ever scored on Alabama in the 90 year history of Brian Denny Stadium. And then just a little fun fact, the last time a Nick Saban led defense allowed 30 points before halftime was way back when a 20 year old Drew Brees did it. So that's, that's pretty cool. My defensive game ball has to go to Kayla Von Chase on. He had 10 tackles, but even bigger, three and a half tackles for a loss. He was disruptive all night. He forced Tua to kind of have to move around a good bit, which Tua clearly didn't feel too good at. But Chase on still might not be putting up the sack numbers you wanted him to or expected him to, but I thought last night was far and away his best game of the season. I thought the defense overall actually played really well. There are definitely things that you can look at, things that you have to fix, but you held two with a 52% completion percentage. You were able to get pressure on him, you know. Uh, he threw for 400 yards, but Derek Stingley gave up those two long touchdowns, but both of them you can kind of look at and say the first one, there was something going on on the sideline that just can't happen, especially in that kind of game. And then the second one is probably even the bigger head scratcher of where you have to wonder, why do you have your cornerbacks playing bump and run in that situation? That situation you should be playing prevent. Don't let anything get behind you and they did the exact opposite. So I don't want to take credit away from Bama, but I do kind of feel like in a way LSU gifted them some of their yards and some of their points. Now there is one thing that did surprise me. It was Bama's ability to run the ball. I'm not saying I thought that LSU was going to hold Najee Harris to a Leonard Fournette like performance because like I said in my other video, Bama's offensive line is arguably the best offensive line they've played all year and will play. Najee Harris is a five-star top back in the country coming out of high school for a reason, but 19 carries, 146 yards. He almost put them on his back to bring them back in the game. That's just something I didn't expect. And I don't think it's anything you can look at and say, they did this, they did that. They just kicked our ass in that part of the game. And then Waddle's punt return, you know, it sucked at the time, still does suck, but that's kind of one of those plays where you just kind of have to shrug your shoulders and and move on. Uh, it just kind of fell the wrong way where Race McMath got his hand on the face mask, turned Waddle in the exact opposite direction of which he would have gone, the exact opposite direction of where everybody on the field was. And when you get a guy like Waddle who's that fast, that quick, he essentially just ran, outran everybody on that particular play. So hopefully uh, bad fortune like that doesn't happen again, I guess. But yeah, eight years, a lot of ass kickings, a couple heartbreaks, but we finally got it done. Seeing Coach O in that post game tearing up, seeing Clyde with his father, you know, just seeing everybody, just the reaction, man. It just really made you, I don't wanna say realize, cause you know, or we knew what it meant to them, but maybe it was a little bit more than we thought it was. And even that doesn't feel truly right on saying. Short of an injury or short of some kind of spectacular collapse, uh, I think they were probably putting Joe's name on the Heisman this morning. He's pretty much got that wrapped up, I would think. We'll be the number one team in the country come Tuesday night. Things, uh, things couldn't be possibly looking any better. We got three teams that we should be 
pretty major favorites. Ole Miss, Arkansas, and A&M. Georgia, the SEC Championship game, we have to win that game because I don't trust the committee to put us in, even though regardless of win and loss, win or loss of that game, I still feel like we're one of the best teams in the country. But that's about all I got, guys. I don't have much to say. Man, I'm just so happy we finally got it done. Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, go ahead and drop your stories below of... of what you had happening whenever whenever the game went final or just what happened on this particular play, what happened when, when Burrow uh, kept it, picked up the first down, what happened when Clyde sealed the game with that touchdown. You know, just drop anything down below. I'd love to hear it. Uh, Ole Miss next, so you know O's going to want to kick Ole Miss's ass anytime he gets to play those guys, so should be another good one guys so like always please hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you know when more videos just like this one are posted go ahead and like the video go ahead and like uh go ahead and leave a comment helps this video rank a little bit more so i get more people in watching these we got more discussion on the tigers if you're not a tiger fan i mean you're welcome to i'd love to have a conversation with other, with other fans so hey guys uh see you guys later Bye.